And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you, Isabella Green with us. First time guest is a metaphysical specialist, spiritual healer, author, and service to the evolution of consciousness and the ascension of humanity. Since her powerful reawakening, Isabella has dedicated her life to multidimensional work, which extends beyond the limitations of 3D. Isabella is certified in hypnosis, Reiki, and life coaching. She reads Akashic Records and is an extra-dimensional channeler. Her intuitive and paranormal abilities deepened over a decade of advanced spiritual practices and a pure lifestyle. This has allowed her to create a unique method of remote healing work that she now offers worldwide as well. Her latest book is called Leaving the Trap, How to Exit Reincarnation Cycle. Isabella, welcome to the program. Hi, George. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Looking forward to this. How did this all start for you? It started a long time ago. I've been astral projecting since I was 17 years old until about 25. I had two near-death experiences, one of them induced. Um, I've been facilitating healing sessions for 11 years where I was able to observe what happens once the soul gets out of the body, that immediate moment of the soul coming out of the body. I took the quantum healing hypnosis sessions to question uh, the reincarnation cycle and uh, whether I can or cannot get out of it. I've also been listening to others, and I recently, over the last nine years, been quantum traveling past the um, astral field and the afterlife dimension. So I've um, received the view of the bigger picture, so basically tapping into the uh, quantum field of information. And you also must be very spiritual. Um, I believe that any person who lives the good life or the um, life without regret uh, in service to others is a spiritual person. When you were doing your astral projecting, did you do it at will or was it accidental when it first started? No, absolutely. I wanted to learn how to astral project um, back when I was that young and 17 years old. I had a friend who was a shaman, and he talked about it a lot. He didn't really teach me much until I started to astral project um, on my own because I really wanted to astral project. But astral projecting takes you into the astral plane. It does not take you past the astral plane. But um, between the age of 17 and about 24, 25, I did uh, a lot of exploration of the astral plane on my own. I, I taught myself on my own, although I had an idea. And the shaman that I'm mentioning trained me how to avoid the pitfalls of the astral dimension once I already started doing that. Isabella, what was that moment where you decided, I'm going to do this for a living? <laughs> it kind of was decided for me. Uh, because I, wor I worked in uh, the financial services industry. I lived in New York City. I was very much a uh, rock star by night and a professional by day. And uh, by no means did I have any idea that I was going to be who I am today, even mm, 10 years ago. But uh, then um, around 2010, I got laid off. They gave me a year of pay. Wow. And during that year, yeah, as a severance package. And during that year, I started asking bigger questions. I started asking, why am I here? What am I here to do? And the answers started coming in bit by bit because I promised that if I was told 10 years ago what I was going to be doing right now, I probably would have turned around and went right back to, like, Morgan Stanley or something <laughs> because it would have sounded really, really odd to me back then. I had no idea about what I'm doing right now back then. You mentioned the reincarnation cycle in your book. What exactly is that? Um, I... I suggest that the reincarnation cycle is the artificially maintained system around Earth that traps and recycles souls. Uh, but uh, other planets, in my observation, also have reincarnation cycles of their own. However, the planets that participate in the whole reincarnation cycle system are on the same 
level of consciousness development as Earth plane. So we're talking something below 5D, so between 3.1 and 4.9D, if you want to use numbers here. Um, and they also participate in our reincarnation cycle, and this is how um, I call it cross-species reincarnations happen. Give us your definition of reincarnation. What happens at death? What happens is at the moment of passing, as the soul comes out of the body and travels um, into the light, we all hear about that. Usually it, you're being sucked into a tunnel of white light, and that tunnel spits you out into the afterlife dimension, and that dimension um, is populated by the beings who I call the handlers of the reincarnation cycle. They present you with the life review. Life review, I believe, is based on uh, the Akashic records that are kept around Earth plane, and they show you that you didn't do so good in this lifetime, that you made people suffer, and we all do in one way or another, or whatever, but you're being... Um, presented with the idea that you are not good enough in this lifetime and you need to go back and do it better or pay off your karmic lessons. And then you take a little rest in uh, the afterlife dimension, uh, whether we call it hell or heaven, and I can go into either one of, or both of these because I've uh, visited both in my astral projection. And then about three years later, usually on average about three years later, uh, the soul is back into the new body, except if the person passed suddenly or at a very early age, uh, like in a car accident, then usually they come back six months to a year later, right back into their old family very often as new children. And I know this uh, through the sessions and the past life readings that I facilitate for people. Isabella, when a soul stops reincarnating, what's the reason for that? I don't know that uh, the souls that are already within the reincarnation cycle are able to stop reincarnating. They're, they're souls that have been here for centuries. They don't reach a high plateau or a level where they don't have to come back? This I am not exactly sure about, but my understanding, my present-day understanding, is that you continue being recycled as long as you are within the reincarnation cycle. So it, I do not see uh, that it naturally allows you to get out um, because then it defeats the whole purpose of the reincarnation cycle. Well, that's true, too. Now, why would some people want to exit the reincarnation cycle? as you mentioned in your book. I think it's all about freedom of choice. I'm all for freedom of choice, and I believe that every soul has the right to decide for themselves and choose whether they want to continue with Earth Plane, because there are millions of people who love it, and they don't don't even imagine that they can do anything else, and that's fine. They They should be able to continue um, being recycled or having lives on Earth, but those who are tired or have had enough or feel that they have already fulfilled their um, obligations or the contracts that they made with themselves when they agreed to come into the Earth plane the very first time, they should have a choice and they should have a right to get out. And when you are, whether you are in the near-death experience or you are facing the handlers after your final breath, you're really not presented with a choice at all. They will run you in circles for a while until they find the weak spot, and uh, from that, it makes uh, they make it look as if you made your choice to come back again or to return to the body in case of the near-death experience. We're with Isabella Green. Her book is called Leaving the Trap. Her website is linked up at coasttocoastam.com. It's a remarkable situation. What do you say to people, Isabella, who do not believe in the afterlife? They simply think when you die, that's it. It's over. Well, as, as we believe it, so it is. But um, my father was this way, and he recently passed. And I literally was able to communicate with him as soon as he got out of the physical form. 
And he, from the other side, he told me, wow, now I can see what you were saying all yeah, along. Now he believes, right? Yeah, now, um, yeah, I, I observed where his soul went, I observed, and I could very clearly um, communicate with him. But before he was ready to go, for, and it was obvious because he was deteriorating for a while, and so I, always, I kept having this conversation with him. I was telling him, Dad, watch, we're going to be more in touch once you're out of your body than we are now while you're in the body. And he was always laughing, like, ah, what are you talking about? He was a hardcore atheist. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it happens. So this is what I say. I say, hey, just just see what happens. Was he an atheist all his life? Oh, yeah, yeah, very much so. I assume his parents were the same, right? Of course, yeah, yes, yeah. That's what happens most of the time. But you are convinced the afterlife does exist. You have oh. no doubts. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100,000%. Absolutely. Not only that I have seen it, I've talked to the souls. There, There's such a phenomenon as disincarnate souls, the ones who uh, got out of uh, the, the physical form, whose bodies died, but they attached to a living host because they were terrified to end up in hell or they were just not ready to let go of the physical dimension. And people who have this kind of attachments, auric attachments, they um, are considered to be possessed or considered to have an entity. And I help people with this kind of situations, and I interview these souls. I ask them what happened and, and how come they're sticking around. And some, some have been sticking around for centuries, but... Um, through my own near-death experiences, I've observed that um, there is a very tangible, tangible plane around Earth. It's a layer of reality, and it has a very tangible border that separates the rest, um, separates that layer or that dimension from the higher realms. So if you're trying to get out of, go out of body, uh, and you go through astral projecting, then you're going to be bouncing off that ceiling, or it's a feeling like you're stuck in the jello. That like that layer is going to hold you there. But if you learn to quantum travel like I did, you just bust right through. As a matter of fact, you bypass that dimension altogether. So I absolutely 100% know that the afterlife dimension exists and what it is like. Um, what heaven is like, or the area that we call heaven where the near-death experiences um, happen. I can understand you going to heaven to check it out, but what about going to hell? Why would you go there? <laughs> well, it's it's not really what we believe, George. Um, it's not we... fire and brimstone and people <laughs> screaming? <laughs> well, um I would I would suggest that it's the lower astral plane, and the lower astral plane is very unpleasant because it's populated by uh, the lower consciousness spirits that operate very much on the same level as Earth plane does. Everything is figured out through conflict. There are spirits that harass you or chase you around. There are mazes there. There are um, spirits of the simpler kind, you know, the kind that are not necessarily friendly to you. And that's the lower astral. And this is where souls land, uh, the souls that were not necessarily of the highest consciousness while still alive. And I believe that this is what we call hell. But heaven is the upper astral, and it's exactly what people describe when they have near-death experiences because it's transparent and it's like a rainbowish light and there's this um, music of the spheres you can feel it uh, well if you had cells you, you I would say that you feel it with your cells but it, it, as if it's coming from all directions and this beautiful looking beings and the beings by the way depend on what you believe in so if you believe in angelics and um, ascended masters, you're going to observe this kind of being. They'll be there for you. Yes. If you don't believe in these, uh, then you're going to see your deceased love, loved ones, which I, po I posit, posit that it's still, uh, it, these are still the handlers of the reincarnation cycle. They just can take any 
shape or form that would be the most convincing for you. Describe heaven to us. Well, this is what I, I was just starting to describe. It's, it's an incredible feeling. The reason people that have near-death experiences are transformed is because they, they have a chance to dip their toe into what the natural state of the soul is supposed to be, the love, the kind of love that we do not have on earth and that we are all starred for because it's the memory, the innate memory of the soul. And so you experience this, this feeling of all-encompassing love and everything is peaceful and quiet and the colors are the pastel uh, rainbow colors and the beings around you and yourself are uh, semi-transparent and you feel this music of the spheres, like I said, and it's just uh, really, for people, it is anything that they wish to um, experience or that they believe in. So if they believe it's a garden, they see it's a, it as a garden, but in uh, this kind of presentation, and it's all transparent and beautiful. And so when human soul is um, experiences this and, and the person comes back after the near-death experience, they feel elevated because it gives them just a glimpse of what the most innate state of the soul really is. Now, when people have their near-death experiences, right. do they see their dearly departed loved ones? Who comes to them to aid them? I doubt that. I, I honestly doubt that. I believe uh, that uh, the the ones who come to aid them or to send them back to the body. Right, go back. Okay. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, the reincarnation cycle handlers. And these are the shape-shifting beings, and they can take any any shape that will be convincing for you. So if it's the loved ones that you uh, believe or that they know, they look for your weakest spot. So if it's guilt, then you'll be guilted. If it's love then you will be um, shown the one that you loved the most and lost and you miss them so much. Uh, like in the movie Contact, if you remember. Oh, sure. Right? Yeah. The father showed up. And what did he say? He said, I'm, I'm in this form because then you'd be more comfortable this way. So I believe that the system that sends um, souls back into the bodies during after the near-death experiences, um, the beings are the same as the beings handling the reincarnation cycle. When you reincarnate, do you reincarnate throughout the universe? Or are there other planets involved? Where, where does the cycle begin? Yeah, um, I have observed that the Earth plane, um, the, the reincarnation cycle that has to do with the Earth plane is... Uh, within the dimensional layer that is on a similar um, consciousness development as Earth and all the planets on the same level of uh, consciousness development. For example, there are uh, beings in the um, Pleiades, in the Pleiadian constellation, sure. that are of the fourth dimension or fifth dimension, sixth dimension. There are all kinds of beings populate in other constellations as well. And so the cross-incarnation from one uh, planet into the next and from one reincarnation cycle into the next. Isabella, is it important, is it worthwhile for us to leave the reincarnation cycle or should people stay in it? I think everyone should have a choice and decide for themselves. Because some people love it and cannot imagine doing anything else, and so they are they belong here and they belong on Earth. So maybe they be, they need another twenty six thousand rounds of incarnation. Right. On Earth. Uh, but there are those who have been here from the very beginning of time. At some point in my meditations, I remembered when I made a decision to join the reincarnation cycle or come to Earth from a different planet, an entirely different reality. And that was 
before the human race even existed. So I was an entirely different physical form on Earth plane um, in my first earthly incarnation. But after that, I've been trapped here and recycled for centuries. And it's, this is only this is the first incarnation that I am um, coming into the knowledge, or I have come into the knowledge that I can actually get out. So my soul is tired of being here, and I would love to just retire into the void or to go into an easier reality and rest for a bit. So I think it's up to each individual to decide for themselves, and this is what my book is about because I am a big advocate of free will. Take us on, on a hypothetical mission for a moment. Somebody, and let me set the scene for you. Somebody, they're in their 80s, they're sick, they're in bed, and they die. They just stop breathing and they die in bed. What happens from the moment they physically have died? They come out of the body um, and there is a tunnel. Very often, um, most of the time, it's just the white, the tunnel of white light. Do they know they've died? Yeah, because you can turn around and see your body uh, no longer alive. Are they scared? Are they in shock? You no. Know, usually, it's a relief. I'm saying this uh, because I have. I've been present through my healing work. I've been present in spirit in the room. So I'm in the same form as as the soul that just came out. Yeah. Um, on a number of occasions when people passed and their their loved ones asked me to just be present there and see where they go. All right. So um, it leaves the body. Right. Then what happens? It comes out of the body. Usually there is a there is a beam of white light. And they literally get vacuumed right into it. Sometimes they're able to go visit their loved ones, and loved ones very often mention that, oh, I saw my father when they didn't know that they passed. My father, like, walked through my apartment, or my father showed up in my room and I woke up in the middle of the night. So that will be just about a moment, and then they're pulled into the tunnel of white light, and uh, that tunnel takes them into the afterlife dimension, um, and the life review uh, takes place, and then they are basically um, pressured, maybe, or they go by choice to um, agree that they're going to come back to Earth at a certain point. How many souls, what percent do you think, reincarnate? Everyone who is on Earth, because once you are in uh, the uh, within the reincarnation cycle, once you've entered, it's like the it's like the California Hotel in that song, right? That you can you can check in any time, <laughs> but you can never leave. So it literally uh, the reincarnation cycle gathers souls and invites souls into itself, and souls from other dimensions and other planets come and uh, join the reincarnation cycle. But once you're within it. Uh, unless you know um, what I know, then you are not able to get out. So everyone who is on Earth has been is being recycled here. Are some of the souls ever trapped in this cycle and they just can't get? You say they can't get out. Yeah, those who want to get out usually are unable to unless they've they've gone through adequate preparations and made this decision while still alive. You have talked about quantum travel. What is that? Quantum travel is very different from astral projecting. So astral projecting is pulling the um, astral body in deep relaxation. The body is very relaxed, and, and the astral body comes out, and you move mm, within the astral plane, within uh, the constraints of time and space, meaning getting from one place to the next takes some time. It doesn't take as much time as in the physical, but you still travel. You still feel uh, the movement uh, within space. With quantum travel, quantum travel is instant, and it's not gentle at all. Um, For me, it happens spontaneously, and it literally, you come out of the top of your head like a rocket. Your body shakes like crazy, and then the body is just abandoned. <laughs> it's, it's barely breathing, and you're elsewhere, and you're instantly in a different reality. You're instantly 
um, in the void or in the space that, or in the state of samadhi that we call we call that state. And the void is not really is a, a place; it's it's the state of being. In other words, you have departed Earth and Earth plane and bypass the astral dimension, and you are now in in the higher realm. Do you want to be in the void when you die? I do. I do. This is the most incredible state of being that is possible to experience. So the state of samadhi, or being in the state of the void, is considered to be the highest achievement of the spiritual journey of the human life. But, hey, I've been doing this for nine years every night because I get up in the middle of the night to go there and through my meditative practices. And um, it's the state where everything is present and at the same time nothing. Where does God fit into this? That This is God. This is God. Yeah, this is what God is. It's the primordial field of information, the energy that creates and sustains worlds. Is it something that is easy to attain for people? You have to work at it uh, for some time. If it was easy, I don't think that the ancient masters would have called it the highest um, the Realms. highest goal for the spiritual, the whole life of the human being or the spiritual path, um, but it's it's doable and it's doable um, within a relatively short period of time. I started. I learned the meditative technique and the breath work that took me there for the first time in 2014, and within about a year, I was going into the void, and I've been now. I I. It's easy. Now I, I quantum travel every night, and I get up to do that because it's the most exciting experience you can have. And it, you bypass all of the caca planes, <laughs> uh, and you're just in the, in the higher realms and the highest state of being. And from that space, you can hop anywhere you want to go, and it's instant. It's like te- teleporting into any reality, any planet, any state of being, any state of consciousness that is outside of uh, 4.9D, beyond 4.9D. And you don't need a spaceship to get there, do you? Exactly right. You don't. It's a fascinating situation. What have you concluded by all of this, Isabella? What, What have you come to understand about all of this? We're all on different levels of um, readiness, I think. And those who are ready, for those who are ready, sky is not even the limit. All you need to have is a strong intent and curiosity. And then you're no longer just the um, earthly thing, but you can be... You can be, you can have awareness of the multidimensionality of your soul that is having experiences in other worlds simultaneously with the tiny part of you living within the earth plane. And so, if you have curiosity and intent, there is really, we really are infinite beings, and we can actually become aware of it. This is what I learned. Isabella, how many people on this planet truly get it and understand? all of this? I'm not sure, George. I haven't counted. <laughs> but I know that um, recently at a conference um, where I first presented my book, um, and I mentioned the void, and there was one person, one person out of uh, about 200 present who happened to be a, a well-known filmmaker, filmmaker um, who makes films about um, consciousness. She said, oh, I've been to the void. I've been there, and I've seen it, and I've experienced it, and I know exactly. And she started crying because she said Jeez. that she has not met anyone else who had this experience. And so we had a really heart-to-heart moment there. I'm not exactly sure if, if there is normally, but I know what happened when he went into the blackness because um, through speaking with... M- 
infinite amount of people about their near-death experiences. I've encountered two so far, and now three, that went straight into the void. And for someone who is not familiar with the void, it can be eerie at the beginning because the human consciousness uh, that is not trained properly expects a one. We, we long for objects and people and company and presence or something, you know, something to grab onto, but none of that is present. But if you tune into the state of being, everything is already there because the void is the blackness. It is that really uh, dark space, but not dark the way we look at the word dark. It's just um, the energy field that contains everything within itself. So now we have, the, uh, I know, the third person who went straight into the void. And my big question that I'm posing now and I'm seeking answers to is why so few go into the void, but they still do, but while the rest go through the whole, you know, talking to the angelic-looking beings or deceased ones and, and go into a whole different dimension. And the void sounds scary, but you think that's the place to be, right? After life, we don't have to go into the void because there are different options where we can go after life if we bypass the uh, the whole re- uh, reincarnation cycle space. But the void, for me personally, this is the most all- ultimate space because... I'm, I got comfortable there from um, being in this state for many years. Um, but from the, the objective or the benefit of the void is once you hop into that dark space, you can actually quantum travel, instantly teleport into any reality you like. And I suggest that uh, people who want to scope the potentials of where they can go after life if they are getting out of their incarnation cycle to go experience different worlds. But in my experience, it um, you have to jump into the void first, the dark space, the black uh, field of energy, and from that just have a trace of a thought where you want to be, and you'll be there. Let's go to Joe in Monterey, California. Hello, Joseph. Go ahead. Thank you, George. What a breath of fresh air. Indeed. Um, Yes, uh, there is something beyond the void. Uh, There's levels of being that uh, spiritual masters talk about, and uh, they're almost indescribable. But the scientists, what they call, uh, talk about quantum mechanics, about locale and non-locale, and this this unusual... um, how do I put it? It's um, you're everywhere and everything. Yeah. And uh, there is levels of consciousness that you can have in the physical world. When she says, "I want to ex- see how far I can go," as a as a as a physical being in consciousness, that's the goal of every spiritual being. That's what they try to do here. And this world is a scam, George. It is set. Up so you cannot reach those levels. Why do you think they erase your memory and make sure it's gone when you reincarnate? And they put such a guilt trip on you that you feel, well, maybe I should go back there. I'm so bad and stuff. It's a scam. And ETs are involved with that. And they're negative, they're criminal, and they use us. You, you agree with book. that, Isabella? Go ahead. Straight out of my book. Straight out of my book. Um, Same conclusions. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Is, yeah, 100% the same exact conclusion. And ETs, not all ETs, there are higher uh, level consciousness beings that are not involved, and they do not have their incarnation cycles because they do not need to trap souls. But everything below the fifth dimension across uh, the universe that are on that same level of consciousness, they all participate in, in our reincarnation cycle, and they have their reincarnation cycles of their own. And, yeah, uh, we uh, that is what traps souls um, within our Earth reincarnation cycle. Next up, Jeremy in North Dakota, east of the Rockies. Jeremy, go ahead. Hello, Isabella. Um, 
19 years, 7 months, and 18 days ago, I was in a nearly fatal auto accident. Immediately, I was in a coma for two and a half months. Just before I woke up from my coma, I was under the impression that I was walking up a mountain pathway with my wife at the time, now ex-wife. And as we were nearing the top of the mountain, a bunch of boulders started falling down. I got her into a little cave area, and just as I got her inside, I was knocked off the cliff by a falling boulder. And as I was falling to the ground, I heard a voice from the sky that said, Jeremy, your tasks were not done yet. What do you think that was? Yeah. What might that have been, Isabella? Well, this is the most common line that everyone who has, or just about everyone, except those who go into the black space, the void, um, hear when, uh, when they have a near-death experience. You're not done yet. You have to go back. This is a standard line, and it's also in my book. And if you hesitate, if you start um, questioning that, saying, oh, but I don't want to go back, then they go into running in circles until they find a weak spot, uh, guilt trip you to go back because you didn't do good enough. Who's in charge of the other side? Is there like a taskmaster there or anybody? There is a whole group um, infinite amount of beings that run the reincarnation cycle. They are shape-shifting beings. Um, I honestly have no idea what they are as, as the actual beings, who they are, but they can present themselves as anything and, and because they're shape-shifting, so they can shift into anything, including just the voice. But, like, in this case, where this gentleman heard the voice, you're not done yet. Yep, that's it, right there. They're looking at him, and they're saying, hey, no, go back. Um, But in the most cases, they present themselves as angelic-looking beings, as our ascended masters. I saw Jesus when I had a near-death experience. I know now 100% it wasn't Jesus. Um, Then... They also present themselves as our loved ones or anything. If you are in the tradition that you believe in any kind of deity, that deity will show up, but we don't know what's behind I personally don't know what's behind it. All right. Isabella, tell me about your work as a hypnotist. How would you get into that? I actually do not work as a hypnotist. I call myself a metaphysical specialist or um, a spiritual healer. I took hypnosis just to check... Uh, kind of cross-reference what um, I do with what they do, because um, the sessions that I facilitate could be called like a surrogate hypnosis kind of thing, because I am the one having experiences and downloads and observations for the client while the client is in uh, the relaxed state and all my sessions are remote. And I wanted to see how... They do it in hypnosis because a lot of people told me, or my clients told me, that uh, my work reminds them of being under hypnosis. But my work encompasses a lot of other elements. Um, I look at childhood patterns because I I believe that we have to start from earth plane, and, and we cannot skip that. That's a vital part of our experience. And then into past lives and then into cosmic karmic connections and into the multidimensionality of the soul. And there are a lot of elements in in my sessions. My sessions are really rich, and uh, people receive a huge package of information about themselves and also receive uh, strong energetic adjustments when they take my sessions. What do demons mean to you, if anything? Oh, these are the uh, earth-bound... Uh, spirits from the lower astral dimension. Uh, there is like a, the lower astral dimension is what we call the dark dimension or the lower dimension, the lower world, and these are just representations of, of life forms that populate uh, this kind of dimension, and they pop into the earth plane as well, and people know them as demons. Let's go to the phones. Don in Alberta, Canada, to get us started on the international line. Hey, Donald, go ahead. Hi, George. Hi, Isabel. <clears throat> so Hi. when I when I was young and I arrived on the planet, I thought, no problem, we can be out of here. 
So I read a book by uh, Lob Sang Rampa, and um, he talked about you know <clears throat> moving energy and doing the different types of things. Another later, I came across I think it was Paul Twitchell. He talked about uh, hewing or or you had that or humming kind of the same yes. thing using the mantra mm. to break down the cloak of consciousness. But I didn't realize, I thought it was like a door, you just flip it open and you're out. And uh, But then I realized it's a series of veils. But I guess my question is, is like we got abducted by aliens and sent down here? <laughs> it, just, it doesn't make any sense. Like why would people actually volunteer to come down to the physical plane? Because on the astral plane, you can... I know there's 180 subplanes between here before you get back to a pure spirit and it can bounce up there. But why do people like come down? It's just like you take the red pill or the blue pill or get. Why do they know. reincarnate? You mean? Yeah. Why do people keep coming back over and over? It's just. How well, do you and, and that's part of the your book. You want them not to come back anymore, Isabella, right? Well, I'm not suggesting that I, I want them to not come back. I think everyone should decide for themselves. But there is an initial decision that soul that is not Earth-bound um, originally. Let's say a cosmic soul from a different planet um, decides to join the Earth plane. And Earth plane has been sending distress calls out into parallel worlds and other planets for a long time. And so I remember that I felt that, that I felt that I want to go and help and uh, assist this world in distress. And this is how I agreed to pop into Earth incarnation um, system. But once I incarnated on Earth, that's it. You, you, you know, you check in, but you can't really check out. So this is why they keep reincarnating, because they're already within their incarnation system trap. 